Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Explorer, we're going to take a look at the new Zim Generator. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and we'll press on the cat and hit there. So we did a bubbling on the generator. Here it is. And that's the idea oh, I'm looking forward to exploring with this. And this is with the draw turned on, so it animates that out. There's also the stamp version of these, which stamp immediately. So we did a bubbling on this and took a look through the code. Most of these are radial, or so they're handling rotation. That one is scale. I'd like to take a look at more along the lines of, of this one, where we're moving... Uh, lines horizontally and want to explore some work there see if we can move with a sine a sine uh, or a cosine or something like that all right now uh, let's go then to grab the code that's over here in code we'll hit copy zimjs.com slash code.html we copy that and we'll reduce this down paste it into Adam Paste, 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 or control V, I'm sure would have been fine. We will change this to say generator. And we're using Zimcat01. Let's make let's make this darker. This is the template. We're gonna make it darker in color and then a dark outer color, and we'll get rid of all of this stuff here. And make a new generator. Var G is equal to a new generator. And there's some things we can do in there, such as what function to call uh, to draw. Draw to the Zim Duo. Why don't we go to the docs and just um, grab the what those things are? Our parameters. So in the Zim docs, we have gen, enter, and then here are the, the docs for that. Paste those right here. So it would be color, stroke, color, stroke, width first, and then what function to call to draw or what function to call to stamp and to set up function as well. We'll see all those. So when we draw, we will call gen. And then down here, we have a function called gen. And inside here, we draw on the generator. So g.line, for instance, we might move over 5, 0 in the y. We'll go to 100 in the x and 0 in the y. This will draw a bunch of lines shooting off to the right because each time we draw the line, it draws it from where it ends. So that's a difference here. And we'll open this up somehow. Right click, open in browser. So there's the first line. We start at zero, zero in the middle. We move over five, we draw a line. We move over five, we draw a line. And these lines just go a thousand of them off to the right. If we curve them, here's what it looks like dot rotate 20 degrees 30 degrees there they are and they keep on drawing a thousand of them and they start to get a little bit shaggy looking that's when the dithering that's the, uh, the slightly alpha down diagonals there go on top of one another then we get to see them and they become true <laughs> true diagonals so that that's not good we would want to limit that the way we could limit it is with the max count parameter here so max count of if we've got 360 degrees in a circle divided by 30 Ooh, some math so we're rotating 30 degrees each time that would do one uh, one circle Boop, and that's it and it stops there Brrr. Now, that's not what we want to do, but that's that's roughly how it works. It, it draws to here, and then it rotates 30, 
draws a straight line because it thinks that that's a straight line going from 0 to 100, sort of 5 to 100 or whatever. Then it rotates 30 again and thinks it's drawing another straight line. So it's like it's turning the whole the whole shape each time it goes and it's moving it to the end of the line there. Now we can avoid that from or stop it from happening by pushing here. Push remembers the state and then pop dot pop either there I guess maybe here dot pop will uh, go back to it. So this is going to draw the line and then it's going to um, go back to the beginning and it's going to rotate and then draw the line, go back to the beginning, rotate. So I think you'll see that this now is a spoke of lines. Boop. There they go, a spoke of lines. Like that. All right, but that's not what we're wanting to do. We're not wanting to rotate. We're wanting to draw lines going from the left to the right. So let's try and shoot for those. That would be a line at zero. Well, if we want to keep on moving it over, we could use the generator number. So here's the generator number, uh, count. So we automatically get a count. And we can say count times five or something. Let's try this without the push and the pop, just to show you what would happen um, without the rotate if we, if we handle this. So there's a, uh, the count. We're taking the count. One, two, three, four, five. Multiplying it by five. So each time this number is going to get bigger. And then we're drawing, uh, starting at zero to 100 in the y. And we're not, oh, uh, that's 100 in the x. So we want 100 in the y if we're going to do a bunch of vertical lines. Yeah. So this is the x and y and the x. So we won't draw we won't go anywhere in the X, but we're just going to go straight down 100. Here's what it looks like. Oh, not quite what I expected. So I was hoping for lines going off this way, but because we went down each time, it's starting from where we went down. So again, the push and pop. You got that? So this draws a line to a Y of 100. The next time it generates, it's going to start there. It's going to start down 100 and draw a line again from 0 to 100 down from that. So that's the scoop, which means in here we can do a push. That will remember. And then at the end, dot pop brings it back again. And now we'll get a bunch of horizontal lines. We got that. So we remember where we are in the x and y. We head over in the X and we head to down in the Y. But when we pop, it goes back to zero, zero. We move over a bit more because count is now two. And so that's 10. And we, we go from zero to 100 in the Y. Ooh, wow. And we made lots, didn't we? Let's change our max count to 100. There they go. And we could stamp that right away by going stamp, like so. Boop, right away. Neat, huh? But we'll keep it on the draw. You can also specify how quickly that will draw by this draw count right here. Colon 10. This is 10 times as slow. Alrighty, well, we would want to center that stuff rather than go across to the right like that. So to center it, that's going to depend on how what spacing we put in here. So let's change that to spacing. We had a spacing of 5, but we'll say bar spacing is equal to 5. And then it's going to depend on our max count. So we can do a setup. Let's call a setup, comma, setup, colon, set up. This is a function that will run right at the beginning while we have our generator function setup. And again, it comes from processing. Processing just 
has a function called setup that it calls automatically and it has a function called draw that it calls automatically and that's it and so you come into processing and that's sort of what you're, what you're dealing with in Zim we're doing all sorts of other things we're putting buttons and sliders on the stage or whatever so uh, we don't want to just call setup right away and some draw function right away the reason why we don't draw automatically is that we may not need to draw all the time like that and by drawing automatically that uses uh, batteries on mobile and processing power in general. So we have lots of other things going on in Zim and so we put the processing kind of stuff into this new generator here and then we use our traditional callback functions like so. So in the setup we can translate g.translate is how you ask to move to a place. This is like relative movement or MOB move in traditional Zim. In traditional Zim the objects are made for us already and then we can move them around relatively or rotate them plus equal you know five or something and do general or do uh, relative movement no problem. But we have no relative movement inherent in the Zim shape. So in a Zim shape, it's all absolute. If I had done this in an absolute sense, it would have just kept drawing the line right over top of one another up here in the corner. It's, it doesn't keep on adding to itself. It's not like a, hey, next, 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 next. It's like, start again, start again, start again, start again. <laughs> So um, there's lots of things you can do, of course, with that. But if you wanted to handle those angles, you would have to use sine and cosine to hang, handle out which angle to go to next. Whereas here, we just do a rotate five degrees, no sines and cosines. It just rotates it relative from where it was before. And that is uh, that's something else. It's nice power there. And it's led to people being able to make generative art in processing, for instance very easily uh, for many years. So we've now done that here in this generator. So let's explore that, shall we? Let's get on it, onto it here. So we're gonna translate, if we translate it back 200, for instance, that would, oh, negative 200, yes, that would be, and just one negative is fine. So we're gonna translate negative 200, I don't know, right now we're just trying it out and let's see what happens. So it'll start 200 back. So be it. But I don't think that's centered. And so to center it, what we would really want to do is go the max count. So that's the G dot max count. It's a property of the generator that remembers the max count or sets it, I think. So G dot max count um, times the spacing, times the spacing, and then what? Divided by two. So that should translate it back half of whatever we're going to draw here. That looks good. What if we increase the spacing to 10? Can we see if that's going to be exact? Hmm, looks a little bigger on the left than on the right. Well, we're moving, the count starts at one. So the very first line is moving already. So we probably, really want count minus one to start at zero so that won't move and I think eh, generally uh, something like that would, would do it I've centered a lot of things and I suspect that that's it <laughs> yeah just over a cursor on either side anyway <laughs> don't worry too much about that but uh, there you are now uh, let's Let's stay in the middle a bit more, so we'll just make it 80 going across. And how about we set the stroke a little bit bigger. Stroke width, colon, four, four, five. Let's see what it looks like. It's not bad. Higher, 300. Oh, that was disappointing. What happened there? Oh, okay, so this must be zero and we're just going 300 down. So it wasn't actually centered before anyway. So how would we handle that? Well, 
we could start at minus 150 and go 300 down. That would probably do it. Oh, yes! It's a very uniform barcode. I suppose that barcode probably does exist. It's a very special one. <laughs> first barcode ever made. Here's our first barcode. <laughs> one, 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 one. All righty. Um, Okay, how do how do we make those ups and downs change? What what would we do for that? Well, we could um, we could pass in an array here of or a min and a max maybe min colon fifty max colon three hundred. But we're going to have a problem because that minus 150 is going to be wrong. So it'll do something like that. That's minus 150 and then all these randomly uh, generated heights here. Because this accepts ZIMV values. So that's a ZIMV value. There's also a series we could pass in there or um, other things. So let's make a series. We'll put the series up here. We have to watch it with the series. This is being called over and over again. So if we declared the series here, it would keep on starting the series only for this loop. So keep on restarting that. So we'll put the series up here. Bar series, or we better not call it that. Uh, how about height? You don't want to call the variable the same name as the function. That would just override the, the function. Heights, the series of heights. And we'll go 100, 200, 300, 200. Let's see what that gives us. Now we can put that right in here, heights, like that, and it would call 100 the first time, 200 the next time, 300, 200, etc. Still starting from the wrong place though. There it goes. Nice. Now because we're passing in the series, we can't just do something like heights divided by two or something like that in there. It is an actual series and you can't times a series by two. So we need a value. So a way to get a value, probably the easiest way, is to just ask for the value. Our height h is equal to heights like that. So anytime you call a series, it gets the next number. So now we know h is 100, then h is 200. So in here we put h, and in here we put h divided by 2. So that should give us this series now centered properly. Let's try it. Cool. And it does. A series has a new... Uh, well, I, eventually I want to get to a sine and a cosine or whatever, or noise, like do noise to create these things. But a series can be handy as well. As a matter of fact, if we didn't do the h divided by 2, let's just have a look at this on this explore, and we went minus h there. Can you imagine what's going to happen? Come up here. It's like, oh, it's almost like a bar graph. Well, if these were different numbers in here, as a matter of fact, you could make it a random thing. Uh, well, not quite as easily as before. You'd have to just randomly pick from an array. But, um, I mean, yeah, if you put in an array of minus random numbers, you could graph it. If you, if you want to graph it in a specific order, uh, then the, these don't have to be like this. They could be 500, uh, 20, 55, etc. And as long as you put the right number in here, then you would you would get your bar graph. Now this is repeating that. I don't know that's repeating it, but see that that's basically your bar graph. And if you put the right a full list of data in there, you would end up animating your bar graph. Or indeed, if you didn't want to animate it, you could stamp it like so. And that would be instantly your, your bar graph. Remember, we're repeating that, but we wouldn't have to. Okay, so more on this series. Let's go back here. And what was it? It was 300 back down to 200. 
we're going to center it again. So minus the height divided by two there. This will go back to a positive height. And I think we're good. We're back to centering our, our series. Oh, on a stamp though. Run it. Generated. Oh, generated. Draw. What if, oh, we could apply a range. I mean, this goes up and down. There's another way to go up and down. Let's, let's do the new range. So in the latest version of Zim, Zim Cat, we have a range here that can be put in. How about a minimum of 100 and a maximum of 500 and a step of 10. Okay, let's see what this does. Ah, cool. <laughs> We're expecting that. Maybe a step, a bigger step. Pew, 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 pew. Very cool. What if you wanted that to go up and back down, up and back down, up and back down? Note that our minimum as well as of 100 is, is making this sort of like thick core here. If you didn't want a thick core, you could go to zero there. Let's go zero to 400. Step of 30. Let's see what that looks like. Looks like our zero is a little bit suspect. <laughs> Put something there like a well, five or something like that. Give it a little bit of, little bit of, uh, yeah, there we go. Neat. Now, how would you make it go up and back down? Well, that's with a bounce on the series dot bounce. Like so. Very nice. One of the reasons it's cut off there is because we've asked for 80 of these things. You could probably do some calculations to figure out how that would go. 180 and a spacing of 4. Oh, what's that going to do? Isn't that our the width of our thing? It is. Neat. And once again, the stamp. Although I don't really like the look of that one very much stamps it immediately. Problem is, is our stroke width is four and our spacing was four. So we could do a spacing of six. Oh, right, stamped, I forgot. There it is, spacing of six. All right, uh, let's undo back through some of that stuff. Don't mind the bounce, the bounce. Where are we at? How are you doing up there <laughs> on the Explorer? However, what about nice curves? Like how, how do we handle curves? And I think that that would be more along the lines of sines and cosines. This probably gives us some more specifics to, to what we can do with a series of numbers, but let's, uh, let's try sine and cosine. I can't remember how that works, but the height would be based on that, wouldn't it? So our h is equal to, we've got the count, so do we just do math.sine of the count? That should probably be, if we, if we want this to imagine that it's an angle, like going up, then we probably want to multiply that by radians. That would be only one one degree. That's a pretty slow moving sign, I think. But let's try it, see what happens. Now the question is, is do we still want to center that or not? Okay, let's try centering it. Let's see what that looks like. Well, that's kind of sucky. <laughs> it's a very, very small amount. Uh, times 100. How oh, is that gonna? Oh, right. Yeah, that's right. Because the sign is going to give us a number between 0 and 1, or negative 1 and 1, probably. So there we go. And it's lovely. All right. That is indeed very slow, but I think we're starting to see something. So the problem is, is our angle is going up by 1. The count is going up by 1. So we really want that, I don't know where you want to put it, times. Here's going up by 5 degrees. 
Ooh, nice. Can put 10 degrees. Bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> Cute. Some more. 400. That would be, I suppose, the amplitude. Is that what they call that? And what would it look like if we didn't do this? Negative. Thing jiggy. Ah, that's what happens, huh? Now what's affecting this length right here? Is that the angle? I think it's the angle. Like the five. Ooh, cool. Would you look at that? That's nice. What happens if we run several of these things here? We're kind of getting rid of old code, aren't we? We're going to put some of it around. H2. What would you have to change? So change that to 10 and change this to 200. Not sure what matters. And we're g dot pushing and popping and stuff. Should just draw two of them on top of one another. Does, but maybe we can't tell. So stroke color, stroke color, colon, quote R G B A. Uh, light 256. Can't we apply an alpha to it in another way? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we made the alpha go on the line. So RGBA, that means 256 comma 256 comma 2, 256 comma, and then like 0.2 or something. Put the end of the quote there. So that's making the stroke color have a and opacity, it's still white. We can deal with colors, have fun with colors in just a second if we want to try. Hmm. What is going on? Oh, I get it. So it's got one big bump going down. It has one little bump, a little bump, because we we kept it pretty close to the other one, like one's twice as big. So seven See what happens there. Save it. This one comes up and it comes over. It's a little bit odd because I expect it to. Um, I expect there to be something here, but there's there's not. So I don't know. Medi mediocre, I suppose. <laughs> what if? How do how do you make one go the other way first? that to it? Looks kind of cool, but who knows where that's going to align. Blend modes might be cool as well on this. I'm not sure what happens with blend modes. Okay, different, different um, thicknesses. Let's try adding a thickness here. So that would be stroke, scroll, <laughs> scroll, dot line, stroke of uh, what starts off with a color, I think. No, same. And then 10. Ah! All right. Well, if you want some sort of uh, hipstery, oh, is it hipstery? I don't know. It's sort of more like corporate, corporate look, kind of, <laughs> or some indie pop logo. I'm I'm old wave. <laughs> That's what they call it. It's not a new wave. Hey, they call me old wave. You have to chop this off properly. 
All right, well, there's some Explore. We've been at it for about half an hour here. Uh, I suppose we should look at color. Let's, let's examine color without the overlay. And of course, there could be any number of overlays going on. And for the stroke color, we will try, how about red, green, blue. So that's an array of colors that Zim will, through the Zim V, pick. We'll pick from those. Ooh, it'd be nice to get that down so that it doesn't have that little thing. How many, how many have we got going on there? Is there a way to calculate that? Uh, got steps of 30. Oh no, we're not even using this one anymore. We've got five degrees. Oh yeah, would that be 360 divided by five again? Let's try 360 divided by five. Was that, what is that, the spacing or is that the count? That was the degrees. All right, so var deg is equal to, hmm, we want to put this up top, five degrees. And we want that before we come into here. And we're going to put spacing up there too. And then we can say divided by deg. So 360 divided by the degrees. And do we have to change that anywhere else? No, oh, this is deg in here. Ooh, times rad. Good. That's the amplitude, I think. All right. All right. Yeah. Multicolor. Woo. Woo. I like, I like. So that is with an array. What do you think would happen if we put in a series? You can't pass an array into the series if you want. Avoid that. Red, green, blue. More lippy. This is in red, green, blue. Yep. Red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. Fatten that up a bit. Yeah. Stroke width. What have we got in terms of spacing? 10. Let's go to 8. I'll leave a little bit of spacing in there. All right. Well, you know what? I haven't had lunch yet. <laughs> so uh, that is one exploration in the uh, the processing. It's a little tidy, I suppose. You know, you see processing art, and it's kind of these are people that have been working with this for for many years, perhaps, and it might be all over. Uh, so there you go. Here's some some tidy processing work done with the generator. We'll post this up. Sorry that we deleted that other stuff with the bounce, but I think you can probably figure out how that happened. Maybe I can comment it in here. Bar H is equal to, I think we called heights like that. Okay. Okay, wise guys. So that was the, it went with the series, and then we put a height divided by two in here. Do you like the height divided by two? H divided by two? We might want that in there for this as well. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> That's not what I expected. What happened to our, I thought that was working with the height divided by two. Oh, a minus height divided by two. That's interesting. It was a good explore. We got like a swoop, made a logo. <laughs> a bra. I can recognize that shape. Oh, eyeballs. That's right. These are eyeballs, definitely. Uh, two COVID masks. Um, okay. That's <laughs> super. I don't really like that as much. We'll take that out of there. But you should remember how to do that. What? I don't know if you just put a number in there. What do we do? Oh, that would just shift the whole thing. Okay, great. Let's leave it at that then for the Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract, and uh, this has been a Zim Explorer.
come on in to zimjazz.com slash slack and we would love to see you there zimjazz.com slash slack ask any questions of course zimjazz.com and check out the generator uh, cheers have a great night or day bye bye